Hello and welcome to this third version of doing a tutorial where it's trying to make an image look like there is something you've drawn in the sand. Now when I started to look into this idea of converting a Photoshop tutorial I wasn't really prepared for the amount of different ways of doing this. Um, so this is my third and final adaptation of a Photoshop tutorial. Um, in the first one, um, I sort of there wasn't a picture of the sand. I sort of we made the sand image background first, and then added text to it. In the second one, I used an image that I got from Pixabay.com, and then added a different way of adding text into it. Now, especially this version but also the other version, I did get some criticism and sort of rightly so, that it wasn't necessarily realistic looking. Um, so which is why I tried to find yet another version and this is the version that I've come up with which hopefully is a bit more realistic looking. Um, partly because I'm using a handwritten font rather than a more rigid font for want of a better phrase but these first two tutorials, I tried to adapt the tutorial as rigidly as I could, you know, kept the same things. So this is probably why it didn't end up looking so realistic. Whereas this one here, one, it wasn't a video tutorial, it was a written tutorial. But also I've sort of given myself a bit more leeway to move away from that tutorial where I think it's necessary. So let's get on with this tutorial. So this is the image I'm going to use again. I, like I said, I got this from pixabay.com and I will add a link to this image in the description, uh, the YouTube description. I'll also add a link to the first two tutorials if you want to check them out. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of darken this image slightly. I don't like it being so bright. I mean, you might like it like this, and you, your image that you may want to put this on, you know, it's obviously to your taste, and you may not want to alter it. This is just a personal thing for me. So I'm just going to add a levels adjustment, and I'm going to bring the black level up to about 15 or so, and I'm going to move the gamma slider to 1.4 something or other, which is 1.429 in this case, just to make it slightly darker. And I'm going to merge that in. So it's just a slightly darker sand, which is just for my personal taste. So if you start in the tutorial properly, this would be your background image. So the first thing I'm going to do is to duplicate this. You can press Control and J, or you can right click the layer and come down to duplicate and as you can see control and J is the option and command and J on an op uh, a Mac sorry about that so once you've duplicated it you know what we're going to do is we're going to select the blue channel so what I'm going to do first I'm going to just turn off that background layer for now and come to channels and I'm going to turn off the visibility of the red, green and composite alpha, which will leave us just with the blue channel, which is what I want. And it will make it a black and white image as you can see. And then to this, I'm going to add a blur. So I'm going to come to filters, blur, Gaussian blur and just add a blur of one pixel. So click apply. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export this image as it stands. So I'm going to come to file, export, export as a JPEG, 100% quality. Just click a port, uh, and then just save it under a new name. So. I've already got one saved here, but I'll just overwrite this. So, so I'm going to call mine channel blue test and then just save that. 
so I no longer need this black and white version you can just turn it off turn the bottom one back on oh, I've got to put the composites back to where they were turn all of them back on again so you could either just turn them all back on again and delete this layer or just turn it off but what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete it don't need that so we've now got come down to our sort of locked bottom layer so I can't alter the sizes or whatever by mistake so I'm keeping the locked version and the next thing we want to do is to add some text now I'm going to come to the artistic text and you can put the settings in up here but I'm going to use the character panel and the first thing I'm going to do is to pick a font now like I said in the previous videos the font was a bit more um, rigid although the person who did the Photoshop tutorial was trying to pick a sort of a, a much looser font they are still quite rigid um, so I'm going to go for a font that looks like it's been a handwritten because if you were writing in the sand obviously it would be handwritten so a couple that I've got on my computer I don't know whether it comes part of Affinity Photo or whether I've downloaded them over time there's one called Heather there's one called um, uh, Bradley which is one I'm going to use and one called Darling so let's try the Bradley one, it's Bradley hand, and I'm going to crank the size up to 144 points, and I'm going to leave it as black. So I'm just going to click on somewhere in the sand here and start typing. What I want to put into the sand so I can now close that and I'll come to the move tool and using this handle up here I'll just click and rotate it around I'll resize it by holding down the control button and clicking and dragging one of the corners so it stays in proportion there and just move it one slight rotation right I'm fairly happy with that as it is now you don't necessarily have to use a font you could get the paintbrush tool and paint in you know draw in the message yourself so it is quite literally handwritten and just to prove this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a hand drawn heart shape here um, so I'll just come down one layer and add a pixel layer between them come to the paintbrush tool I've got black as my color hardness is a hundred percent and the size is fairly small so I'm just going to click and drag this not the best drawn heart in the world there you go that will do so I really need these to be on the same layer so I'm going to click and highlight the text right click it and click merge down so those items are now all on the same layer so we're now coming to the part where we're going to sort of add the effect so I'm happy with the position the size and what have you so I've got this layer highlighted with the text on and I'm going to come up to filters distort and displace now this is where we need that image that we saved earlier from the blue channel so you can need to come to load map from file and you need to then navigate to where you've saved this so I'm going to click on that and click open and 
and its default setting of 10 hopefully you can see it's already started to make a jagged more jagged outline around the text and the heart you can move this either way you know displace that effect as much or as little as you want um, you know, I'm going to want this a bit more than 10 but probably around the 20 25 mark let's try it's probably easier to type this in rather than slide uh, let's go with 20 and see what that looks like yeah 20 I'm fairly happy with the way that looks so I'm just going to click apply now we're still on this text layer here I'm now going to come to the effects icon here and just click on that to open the layer effects panel. Now whereas in the other videos we went for the bevel emboss option, this time um, we are going to go for the inner shadow. So I'm going to put a tick in that box and oh, hang on what I should have done first was the color overlay let me just turn that off sorry it's my mistake color overlay click on the name to get the options now at the moment by default is set to black but we need to change that so I'm going to click in that box there and up here we have the eyedropper so I'm just going to click and hold the eyedropper drag it out and what I need is a selection of the sand color probably the da darker the better probably darkest up here so click on that and that sand color is now in this little circle next to it I mean black is still set as the color but if I click on that now the color here will change to the color we've selected <coughs> now I'm just going to open it up again what I want to also want to do is to add some noise because at the moment it's just a plain solid color but we want it to look sandy still so I'm just going to add a hint of noise about there and then the last thing I want to do is change the blend mode for this now I found that linear light hard light and glow are probably the best ones um, hard light is there linear light is pretty much the same and glow which is down the bottom is a slightly lighter version I think linear light and hard light makes it a bit too dark for my, me personally I went with glow you don't have to stick to any of these settings you go with your personal taste then now we put the inner shadow in so I'll put a tick on the inner shadow and then click on the word to highlight and give me the options now the radius I'm going to make 0.1 now the offset if I I'm going to do this if as you can see as I move this higher and lower it looks like that is sort of dropping downwards which is the effect we are after and I'm going to go for an offset of round about 10 that one's 10.9 that will do be, you know, I could just type it in and get 10 but 10.9 will do and then intensity again it, it's sometimes it takes a while for the program to catch up a bit but I'm going to have this on about 16 that. and you could change the angle of where the shadows are depending on where you think the light source is coming from but I'm going to leave mine at 
three, one, five. And the last effect we're going to add to this is Gaussian blur. So I'll put a tick into that. Highlight the words to give me the option. And I'm only going to give it a very slight blur in. So I'm going to go 0 0.5 just to give it that fuzzy feel to it. So I can now close this. And then the last option is just to lower the opacity overall of this layer so probably around I found around the 60% to 75% region if you, if you go too far it would just one it was fade a bit too much it won't look like you've like really drawn into the sand in, in my opinion so like I said somewhere around the 60 to 75 so if I go for the middle option of 70 there we go so basically that is the end of this tutorial um, hopefully this is more realistic looking than especially the second version I did and it will be more to what people want so thank you for watching and goodbye.